We are starting the beautiful shear. This week's Parshas, Parshas Bo. Like Bo B'Shalach Yisra Mishpatim. And one of the things we talk about is the new month. The first mitzvah of the entire Torah starts off in this Parsha. And one of the most interesting things is HaChaydish. The blessing of the new moon needs two witnesses. The Chidush is that even when Mashiach comes, even though we have calculations today with the calendars and everything, Mashiach comes, we're going to go back to that time where two witnesses are applicable. But how can that be? Everybody always asks. What does that have to do with me in my personal life? Because I have a calendar. Who the heck cares if there's witnesses? Who the heck cares? But it still says you need it. The Torah tells you you have to have it, right? So the answer is like this. The Chiddush is that you have to believe in God. And that God tells us to do it. So we're doing it out of Kabbalah's oil. No, I don't need that. Kabbalah's oil means we're doing it for no reason except for this reason. So in order to serve God, you have to use your brain. You have to calculate. And not only you have to calculate, but you have to use faith. So the same way with Mashiach. The Pasha tells us the same thing with Mashiach. The Mashiach has to come to two categories. Through Moshe and Aaron. Moshe is Kabbalah's so oil doing everything the Abishter says and Aaron is using the logic. Aaron was the one who always tried to negotiate and make shalom and make peace. He was the politically correct rabbi. And Mashiach comes, we got to do both. Yes, we got we to gotta believe in Hashem, that Mashiach is going to come, but we got to do stuff to bring Mashiach. And, and how do we do that? By learning the laws of Shabbos. Because when you learn the laws of Shabbos, you break all boundaries. And how do you do that? By listening to Rabbi Freeman over here. He's going to change your lives. Mamish, Kvaldik. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Rabbi Freeman. Thank, Thank, you very, Thank you very much. <coughs> Good evening, we are learning the Malachas of Shabbos from this fabulous book. The Malachas of Shabbos, the 39, David Ribiat. I hope you will purchase this book and study it on your own. Hearing this once may not get you there. We are now in chapter 5 of the second book. It's called Common Borer Applications. Borer means sorting. Common, very bored. You're bored already? <laughs> Not bored, borer. 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 More bored. <laughs> Even more bored. <laughs> more than bored. Smorg is bored. <laughs> but it's borer. Who can tell me the first? Oh, and this is the seventh malacha in what's called the Seder de Pas, meaning the order of making bread. Can anybody, uh, just to review quickly, tell me what the first one is? Opening the ground so you could uh, put the seeds in. Which is called? Plowing. Plowing. <laughs> Koresh. Planting. That's next. What's the name of that in Hebrew? Uh, Koitzer. No. Why don't we, we put picture in the of the show picture and have some pictures on the phone at least or in the paper maybe that's what we could We're do. working on that. We're we're getting bigger we're all the time. Yeah, even though our our uh, following is getting smaller. Anybody want to We're getting bigger ideas with smaller mm -hmm. followings. Anyways, the second one is garlic? Oh, sowing yeah. the seeds into the ground, which is called what? Don't everybody jump. It's called. It's called. Zorea. Zorea. Zoro. You know that guy? Zorea. That's how you remember it. It's hot. That's number two. You planted, you've sowed. Chorej, Zorea. You move on. Once they grow, you've got to cut them down. That is called. No guesses. Koitzer. Koitzer. Koitzer, that's my third. Reaping. Koitzer. Right, reaping. that's the third. That's the third one. My favorite part, the reaping part. That's right. I yeah. like the Grand Reaper. You're the happy reaper. Happy reaper. <laughs> <laughs> reaping souls into Judaism. Okay. So we've, we've, we've plowed, we've sowed, we've cut, we've reaped. What happens is they're all cut lying on the ground. What do you got to do with all that stuff? All that wheat that you've just cut? 
They're drying it up. You gotta separate it. No, it's just on the ground there. Nothing. Now you gotta separate the seeds from the. No, the... no, no. It's just still lying on the ground. Gotta do one thing. You gotta pick them up. Ah, oh, oh, you can't do that. Gathering. Mommer, mommer. Yes. Gather. gather them up. Gather All them. these are yeah. forms of work that have a direct application to Shabbos. And <clears throat> we've learned every bit of it. But we're moving. Are you gotta forward. gather up the toys from your kids that they throw all over the ground? I think we said we were allowed to do that, right? Um because you're gonna fall down five minutes later anyways. <laughs> like I say, if you have a Shila, ask a Rob. <laughs> That's the main thing. Realize that this is a, an information share, it's very informative. You can learn what to do, but if you do have a question and it's bothering you, call the Rob. That's it. Okay. Now you've got the stuff gathered up. You're on the Fifth malacha, which is, what do you do with it once you have it all there? This one. This one. <laughs> you thresh it. And Se that one we remember. Threshing means to separate, or that's already breaking the curl? No, that's, threshing is, you know, you uh, separate the, um, the seeds from the, uh, it's a, the chaff from the uh, kernels. Yeah. Right, but uh, it's, it's, it's a big separation. It's not, it's, we're doing another separation of sorting. Down a border, uh, the the seventh one, but the fifth one is called threshing, and the Hebrew for that we know because of the base hamik. Dash. Right. All right. Now we're moving along. <laughs> 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 Gotta have ways to remember this stuff, you know. Okay, so we're dashing along. With the dash. Now we come to one that sounds like the second one. You throw up these. You've not. You've separated the kernels from the chaff, but. Uh, not the real you find are you how would you say threshing let's get threshing right before we move on to the next one you you know you got all the other stuff you got leaves and uh stalks and all that that's what threshing takes apart I'm asking, is there for so you're left no, with you, you what give me. i'm asking for it oh. yeah okay it's the removal of grain kernels from their chaff. Okay, so that's what it is. So what's the next one is you throw it up to the wind, what you what you've threshed, and the wind blows off stuff that's light, lighter than you know. And before we continue, you gotta say this is sponsored in honor of your mother. What's that? My mother. Yeah, you the same money. What? The money was in honor of your side. No, that was my father. Okay, so say the name. Oh, so we're still honoring my, honoring my father. Yosef Yitzchak Ben Yehuda Hertz. Amen. 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 You got a double a double portion this year. <laughs> <laughs> double honors That's for my dad. All right. So you throw it up to the wind. The wind blows it away. That's called Zora, not Zoraya. Zoraya is planting, sowing. Still got hundred percent. Zora is winnowing. Now that was number six, which brings us to the one we're on now, which is Borer. Sorting. How does that apply to anything in the process? What do you have to do? You might have pebbles. Okay, you got them. You have to sort out the pebbles and the debris. Okay. So what pebbles? Pebbles. 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 This is what. Uh, you know, little rocks, tiny things. The sorting processes involved get smaller and smaller. You get more and more and finer of the stuff, the bad stuff out, and, and until you get to the really good stuff. So borer, this is called applications of borer. Three things to get away with borer on Shabbos. You have to do it. You have to have three things that will help you. You have to know three things. What are those three things? Any guesses? No. Okay, it has to be two hands. Okay. One is be miyad, immediately, you have to do it immediately when you're going to eat it. And you have to take the good from the bad, the, the oichel from the pasoilus, and you have to do it biyad by hand. Those are the three Two things. hands or one hand? Hmm? Two hands? Well, generally, you do use two hands. Have you ever tried to separate anything with one hand? Yes. Can you do it? Yeah, you hold one yeah. baby in one hand yeah, and you, yeah. you cook with the other one. Oh, I see. I've seen women do it all the time. They, well, the main thing is... You every day. They well, have one, okay, one. but it's by hand. The idea is by hand. You yeah. take the cherry out of the raisins by no, hand. You, you do it with a chopstick. I've seen one. people do it with a chopstick. 
They just put the chopstick through the thing and it comes out. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. using a tool. It might fall under in a different category. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to use... What What are the common border applications in our daily lives? How, how does it affect us on Shabbos? So, number one is preparing and eating foods. The main thing we have here is removing bones and fish or chicken. These are two main dishes on Shabbos. You usually got to take the bones out somehow, but you take the fish from the bones. How do you get a notification every five seconds? Huh? Are you getting one? You get every five seconds a notification. It's like every five seconds. You're like, da, 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 da. This is cool. He subscribed to a million things and they all notify him about everything they oh, do. That's right. Is that why? That's why. You got to turn them off. Just turn off your notifications. You could do yeah, I got to turn it off my phone. All right, so one is not permitted to remove bones from fish, chicken, or meat unless doing so for a small child or elderly person for whom eating would otherwise be impossible. Got it? Yes. Oh, well, you do well. That was pretty simple. Removing the skin of a chicken. What do you think? Can you take it off? You don't want it. Yes. You can take it off? Yeah, for immediate use and for the food. No. Yeah. No, you missed the point. You can't take the chicken off, the skin off. You can take the meat off I'm the sorry, chicken. Yeah, yeah. The, the good oh, from the bad. Avi's right. here, yeah. Avi. Let's Came go. Came night. We got the Let's famous woman here. Uh, oh, but... Uh, finish, finish, oh, watch, hold watch, on, watch. I'm wrong. I admit I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, no, right. Tali, I got it wrong. Listen to this. It's, a, it's, it's different. Naftali. Yeah, it is permitted to remove the skin from cooked or roasted chicken because they are both regarded halakhically as the same type. The skin and chicken the chicken the are chicken. the same. They're, the, they're not different the types, so you can take it off. So chicken from the chicken. So yeah, chicken skin you can take off. Stop being such a chicken. <laughs> but according to some, however, it is preferable to do just do it just prior to eating. Got it? Sorry for that mistake. Can I plug my phone into your thing? Yeah. Well, because my phone <coughs> it's too far here. You plug it in there. What about trimming the fat from your meat? One may not trim the fat from a piece of meat even just before eating it. Similar to bones and meat. Can't take the fat off the meat. Why not? To separate the fat permissibly, one may hold down the entire piece of meat with his fork while trimming away the meat from the fat. Meat from the fat. Meat from the fat. Got it? Got the meat from the fat. Meat from the fat. Not fat from the meat. To separate the fat. Yeah, okay, that's how you do it. Separating the fat in this manner is equivalent to removal of oichel, meaning what you want to eat, mitok from within the pasolas, what you don't want to eat, which is permissible. Another method, trim off the fat together with some of the meat. However, one must trim off a meaningful amount of the meat with the fat, more than what would be left on fat that is being discarded. So you have to cut, it, you want to take the fat off, cut the fat off, but you got to cut a little meat off, but cut enough meat off to make it look like you cut some meat off. Don't just cut a little sliver of meat there. That's the little point, the diuk that you have to know. What about removing feathers or hair from cooked chicken? Any takes on that? Yeah, no. uh, you could, why you can't you? Why can't you? Probably take chicken from the chicken. Oh, you say why? Uh, One second, it's also chicken from the chicken. You could take out the skin, no? Skin you could do because yeah, chicken yeah. and the skin are the same thing, yeah. the same chicken. No, but the, the feather is also chicken. Right. So you'd think it's you'd just be like food. the skin, right? Take out the skin together with the feather. You would think. No, I wouldn't because it's not food. All right. Well, here's what he says. It is questionable whether one may pull out bits of feathers or hair left embedded in cooked chicken because to do so constitutes the removal of pasolas, what you don't want, Mitoch ocho, from within, what you do want. Bad from the good, in other words. Where possible, it is preferable that one expel the feather debris from his mouth while eating. If this is not acceptable, an acceptable option, he, the unwanted feathers may be removed just before you eat it, when the food is, in, is on the plate in front of them. This method may also be used when feeding a small child. Regarding the question of goizes, Removing feathers, you have to look at goyes. It's another model. So can you, can you say it again? No, no. Okay, the feathers, it's questionable. Because uh -huh. it is chicken. You know? It's part of the chicken, right? But the thing is, it's, you don't want it. Um, so the idea, the way you do it is you, you either do it straight from your mouth, when you get it in your mouth, then take the feather out, or 
from your mouth to God's ears. Or you should do it right before you eat. Uh, those are the two pieces of advice given in this paragraph. Okay. Peeling fruits, vegetables, eggs, nuts. Fruits, vegetables, Peel. eggs, nuts. May be peeled or shelled, provided that this is done by hand or with a knife, not a peeler, and that the food is oh. meant to be used right afterwards. I'm going to tell you, uh, I got in again. Peels back in. He's in every page of this book. <laughs> That's why we're doing the Malachas of Shabbat. <laughs> okay. So you got that? You can do, you can peel all those things, but not with a peeler. You can do it by hand or with a knife. Just before you eat it. And you can make it a peel. Okay. And, yeah, eat it right away. Miyad. Cracking nuts. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Can yeah, we crack nuts? nuts? It's a woman's yeah. malacha. Woman's malacha. Yeah. Not a man's malacha. Can we do it? How many of you have a question whether we can it's do it? Question. It's Shiloh. I think it's a Shiloh. It's a Shiloh. Okay. Uh, I think, I think some opinions say you could crack nuts, some opinions say no. Uh, no, it's wet from the good or good from the bad. Yeah, no, yeah. same story. You could do it. For question you is, could you use a nut cracker? Could you use a nut cracker? Right there. Those are pre cracked. Right. No, All right. that's the point. It's it's crap, right? No, the pre cracked. Could you use a nut cracker? On Shabbos? On Shabbos? Yeah, mind. crack nut. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, we got two uh -huh. people say yeah. Anybody else? For immediate use, maybe. Well, it says here a nut cracker may likewise be used to crack mm -hmm. open nuts. Yes, you can use a nut cracker. Well, a nut cracker is not considered a borer utensil. Okay. It's not specifically designed for borer. Okay, because it does not select or sort. You have the nut already selected before you crack it. So you're not you're not using it to sort out the nuts. Just to crack it. You're using it merely to break apart the shells around the nut, leaving the shell and nuts mixed. Any separation or sorting that may take place later is accomplished with one's hands and fingers. However, Special care must be taken to remove the nut from the broken shell and not the reverse. You got it? So you get you get a you get a piece that's broken off of the shell with nut in it. You gotta take the nut from the shell. Right. Not, not the shell from, from the, the nut. nut. <laughs> <laughs> but you can crack that nut with a nut cracker. Completely but you can't fine. you can't crack it with a regular nut, with another nut. Didn't say anything about that. Why not? What we what would that do? I mean, because that, that, I, I, what I used to do is I either use my foot or my, my front of my hand. Yeah. This way it's not, I'm not using uh, any. So you can, you can, though. You're allowed. Uh, like, I can't just, like, take another nut and crack it? Why not? I don't see a problem. With it. See a problem. We didn't learn anything about it, but mm -hmm. I don't know. If you could use a nutcracker, why can't you do that? You're, all, you're already doing a sheen nut. nutcracker, you're using a tool. You're not using, you're not separating. Okay, but did you see the difference in the tool? You're not necessarily separating, you're just breaking it with a tool. Right, you're not, it's not, the nutcracker's not used for sorting, it's used for cracking, cracking the nuts. That's it, you're not, cracking. So you're not separating. Right, so you can use it. And you, and you can take whatever you want. Yeah, but you got to take the good out from the bad yeah. once you got it all on. Yeah, you can't take out the bad. Right. All right, so we got, we're getting somewhere. Hey, this is cool. Okay, what about preparing salads? Unfortunately, people are sometimes unaware of the requirement of miyad when peeling fruits or vegetables for a salad. Miyad means immediately. What about uh, you got to check for bugs on Shabbos? We're not dealing with that at the moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, pardon me for not answering. I mean, I, I don't know if you could take the bug out, but you should certainly check for it. You, uh, you don't want to eat the piece of lettuce. Are you allowed to take the bug out? I, probably, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't no, know yet. But, but, but you're not, you're not eating. You're taking the bad for the good, again. Yeah, it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got a bug in your wine, you know. How do you get that out? You pour some of the wine with it. So you'd probably take some lettuce with the bug, you yeah, know. And then you waste some of the lettuce. Okay, but you can't eat the bug. Uh, it doesn't look nice, the lettuce anymore. It's not a full lettuce. But it's a permitted way to get rid of, uh, you know, yeah. save yourself from doing the malama. Okay, so people are not aware that you, when you uh, peel fruits or vegetables, it has to be done immediately before you eat it. Peeling eggs for egg and onion salad is a particularly uh, good example of this. Therefore, 
When preparing egg salad, deviled eggs, chopped liver with eggs, one must remember to peel the eggs just before the meal and not earlier. Note, making a fruit or vegetable salad may also involve the malacha of toichim, when cutting or chopping into small pieces. That's like grinding. It means grinding. To avoid any shayla, it is advisable to, a, to prepare the salad immediately prior to use and cut the pieces slightly larger than usual. If you want to make salad, do it right before you're going to ma- eat it and cut the pieces bigger. That's it. You hear? Then you're That's cool with salad. These are all the places where you can get nailed with bora. You know, you yeah. know, you gotta know this stuff. Okay, using an apple core. What do you guys say? Um, to take out the apple core. Yeah. One of those machines to take out the apple core. Like a you know a hand thing, or whatever. That picks out the core. It cores apples. It takes the core up. Can you use it on Shabbos? I doubt it. Well, highly doubt it. Let's find you, out. You're still gonna yeah, gonna sure. don't take some good with them. As long as for immediate use, it's All okay. Right, you're getting that, okay. An you apple would, core. probably would be impossible to just, just take bad bear without any good, right? Right. An apple core, which leaves a generous amount of the apple on the core, as most cores what apparently if, do. What if not so uh, generous? Well, that's the point. You should, should be no, enough to, to see some good on that core. You know what I mean? Some you also... You always well, enough to show that you got some good there. It's not. He said, "Don't use minimal amounts. Like, you know, make it make it look like you. It's you're really doing it. So you can't do this on Shabbos. You can use an apple core because they generally cut a, a, like a square out of or a round thing. You got a lot of apple on there. I would think because you can use the same thing as to, for the to, to break the nut. Yeah, the core is the same thing. So. Right, but the difference here is that. Yeah. If, you, if it would take out only the core, you couldn't do it. You know what I mean? It's got to have some apple on it. Got to have some apple. Right. Some good with the bad. That's how you take it up. Okay. Fruits with edible peels. Apples, pears, peaches, nectarines, tomatoes. Although it may seem reasonable to consider edible peels an integral part of the fruit and not something you don't want called pasoilus, one is nevertheless required to treat them as pasoilus. And to therefore peel these fruits, here you go again, what peel these say? fruits ju- just only just before eating. Pasolus means what you don't want. Puzzle. Garbage. Yeah, you, want, you don't want to eat that peel. All right? So that's puzzle. Pasolus. Waste. You don't want it. So, you, so even though like, um, uh, like a tomato peel is really like it's like part of the fruit, right? It's not a hard thing to eat. So he says, if you don't want that peel, you should still treat it like a peel. <laughs> and do it. How do you do that? You peel it just before you eat it. Same as the nuts. Right? Yeah. Okay. always nuts. This is because the preference of the individual to reject the peel. Did you ever get rejected in your life, peel? <laughs> no, I My whole life. Man. One big rejection? Coffee? No, I'll take some <laughs> salt ranch there. Thank you. Anyway. Support Chaim Peel. Accept him into your life. That's it. He needs your love. Everybody needs love. Everybody, Everybody needs, needs love. love. Yes, and money. Oh, I did, I, did I say that? No, but you're right. <laughs> or I've got here appealing for money. I'm making yeah. an appeal. What is that? I don't want that. <laughs> you don't want it? <laughs> okay, so in this case... It's your preference that makes oh, the difference. The chocolate milk. No, no, no. Thank you. If you don't like the peel on a on a tomato, yeah, that your milk. preference is what's making it pasoilus, not wanted. Okay? <laughs> and not whether it is edible. Even though it's edible, you still don't want it, so your preference changed its Matsias on Shabbos. Change it its what? existence. Existence. What's its category of existence from oichel to pasoilus. Category A. By you deciding, Shabbos is the whole thing of Shabbos is mind over matter. It is you, you, you make Shabbos. If you, you don't, you, the more you know about it, the more you can make it. Right. Otherwise, it's just another day of the week. That's right. Absolutely. What are you doing? Right. Try to find <coughs> you need a half shirt? All right. Here's a big one: wrappers and plastic or paper layers on foods. What do you guys think? They're all tzaddikim. 
<laughs> rappers, you know, those guys who rap rappers, music. Rappers, rappers I'm talking music. about them. <laughs> what is the, the catch? I, I mean, you know, I guess I'm old school. I like the 60s, you know. What What's the catch in rap? Seems like you got to memorize rap, a, a rap book is, of stuff no, in one song. No, rap is basically a poem. It's I a poem, but it's so long. Poems, poems got boring, so yeah. people started just reading it really fast. Oh, yeah? And that's called a rap. Reading that's a poem a really fast. That's rap. Like, uh, instead of saying, reading, no. and he went to the store and he got a book. He goes, he went to the store and he got a book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, professors got bored of trying to teach the kids poetry. Uh, so they just started they reading started really rapping fast. it. And then they got the class over with and they, they you know, they did uh, the curriculum right. they had to do. That's still swear. All right. So, our, can you rap, right. can you do rappers on Shabbos? Rappers? Can you rap on Shabbos? Yeah. All right, well, we're dealing here with so rappers. For the same Shabbos, for later on the Shabbos, not for after Shabbos. No, but you're still preparing for... Well, the uh, rappers we're talking about here are the rappers and plastic or paper layers on foods. So it's not the same thing, but... Yeah, for later, for the rest of the meal. Like, let's right. say for dessert. Wrap it so, up. So, rappers food. that adhere, adhere means they stick to, very closely, to the food, and, and must be peeled off. There you go again, you even made it into the rap session here. Let's take a picture of this dude. This guy put every spice on the pizza. Oh my fun. god. <coughs> okay, you got rappers that are really close, sticking to the food, you gotta peel them off. <laughs> they are classified as peels and may be removed for immediate use only. Get one of three slices. Mm. The wash, the wash. These include foil or candy wrappers, toffees, individually wrapped chocolates, etc. The same rule applies it's to wax, paper, pizza. wrapping around gefilte fish, yeah, cakes, yeah. pastries, cape, cu cupcakes, and the like. Sausages with skin-like mm -hmm. plastic wrapping such as salami and kishka you know, may likewise be peeled, but only for immediate use. Only for right away. Right. When you want to eat it, that's when you can peel you it. You still have the same broca. You're not saying anything else. Still got a word. You, afterwards, you, you bench it instead of... But in the middle of the third pizza, you're not saying another broca. Well, we'll die another time. All right. Labels on food, collars, or fruit. What's that drama? The Rev is on our shear now. I'm at a shear right now, Rabbi. Yeah, I'm out of sheer right now. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Let's get back hooked up. <clears throat> what about labels stuck to the surface of foods should preferably not be peeled off? Then you add some of your friends? But should instead be cut away together with a small part of the food. At, uh, this can even be done long before eating. You could do that before eating. Well, That's true. However... Chala labels should not be should be removed after the chala was cut for the bracha, so as to, um, as to do so earlier would could disqualify from the status of a shlemus, meaning a whole chala. This is required for lechem mishnah. You need two whole chalas on when you make um, hamotzi on Shabbos, and if you have a label on that one of the chalas or both of them, don't cut the label off till after you make the bracha. Get that? Yeah. That was a little more complicated. Because you don't want to ruin the challah from the status of being perfectly whole. And now, we turn you to the exciting man. The one who takes the board out of border. <laughs> the one and only, Rad Man, Harav, Chaim Peel, world's greatest Suffer. shir. Uh, Manhig shir. Magid shir. The world's greatest great Manhig shir just has spoken, Rabbi Freeman. And we're going to hear this beautiful, wonderful thing that we heard this week. Everybody wants to know about tefillin. Everybody wants to know about mezuzahs and how they affect your life. There was a guy this week, the Rosh Hashiva of Lakewood, who sent three people to the oil, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Friedrich Rebbe's oil for Yuch What, Ms. Nagin was going to the oil? Yeah, they went to the oil. And they asked the Rebbe after they went to the oil, they asked him, you know, the Litvish Rosh Hashiva, why you wanted us to go to the oil? To pray for you, he said, because I want to get better. <laughs> no, I wasn't doing it. So there are all kinds of people. All right. So one of the things that's happening this week is Yud Shvat. It's coming up next week. It's the inauguration day of the Rebbe and the passing of the Friedrich Rebbe. 
And there's no such a thing as um, a country without a king. And there's no such thing as chassidus without a rebbe. So there's always a rebbe that always comes. The second there, one rebbe leaves, the next rebbe comes right away immediately without any um, um, pause or any uh, c- confusion because there's no such a thing as a headless um, animal, a headless body. There's always something that's on the top. They can run around a little bit without a, you know, a chicken without a head, but that's not going to last too long. So one of the things that's very interesting is that it says when Mashiach comes that certain technologies are going to happen. The Rambam says Mashiach is going to come in a natural way. And right now we are seeing stuff that one man could stop entire country from functioning properly. One man could shut down the entire government. And what is he fighting for? He's not fighting for something against the country. He's not fighting for something that might hurt the country. He's fighting for just a border. Just a border wall. Nothing else. He wants a wall on, uh, on the fence. He wants a fence around his house. That's all he wants. But it says when Mashiach comes, all nations will become one. So they're willing to shut down the government. They're willing to shut down the entire nation in order to not have borders. And it says Mashiach comes, all the nations of the world will come as one. And that's what they're fighting for. The Democrats are, are the party of Geula, the party of redemption. And they are fighting that the entire USA will become one nation with the world under the UN flag. That the entire world will be under the UN. And eventually the UN will turn over the mantleship to the Israel and say, Israel, you run us. <laughs> and Mashiach will be here. Another thing it says is that the nations of the world will be so busy fighting themselves, they won't have time to fight the Jews. They'll be worried about everything else. But if you want to enjoy life to the fullest, how is it going to happen? It says, Mashiach's come through what? Keeping Shabbos. That's all we got to do. One Shabbos and we all be free. So instead of worrying about all your politics and all your craziness, and he should have a wall, he shouldn't have a wall, he should have a gun, he shouldn't have a gun, worry about keeping Shabbos. You know why? Because that could change the whole, the whole situation. Forget about government shutdowns, forget about government uh, uprisings. We have went through thousands of years of government uprisings, government fallings, and the Jewish nation will still be here because we have Shabbos. And how do we do that? Listen to Rabbi Freeman. Lachan. I should let you know that the views of Harav Radman Peel are his. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but... He's the rad, you know what I mean? Personal uh, highlights. <laughs> He's the radical in this crowd. <clears throat> okay, back to the board of Borer. How are we doing? You guys are still here. It's, it's not no, that boring. No, 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 it's pretty good. We're pretty getting good. this, right? Because it applies directly to what we got to do. Right. Otherwise, right. everybody would have left the middle of class. We did. We came back. <laughs> well, uh, I, 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 uh, I aroused everybody. You do, that's the purpose. To listen to you, because they're like, that guy's so bad, huh? Yeah, right. I'd rather listen to people. <laughs> right. Put the madman on. It's-